Um, Father, we just give you thanks for this day that you have given us. Um, we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for giving us the desire to meet and to learn and for us to grow in you. Father, we pray that, Father, that you will touch hearts today, that you will build up, that you will grow. And, Father, that you will bring even people who don't know you into your kingdom, Father. And we pray, Father, that all that be said today will be pointing people to you to glorify your name. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our passage for today is Philippians chapter 1, verses 19 through 26, and I will read the verses here. Um, I'll be reading out the ESV version, the elect standard version. <laughs> if you read it, um, verse 19. Um, it start off with the end of verse 18. There will say, yes, and I will rejoice. But verse 19 say, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now and as always, Christ will be honored in my body whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which shall I choose? I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. A uh, few years ago, um, we, I worked for Terminix and in the morning, one morning, that all the technicians was at the office, and one of my friends were there, and his name, um, his name is Tim. And we was all at the office there, was just hanging out, and before we go out and get on our route. So as soon as I leave the office, it's been about five or 10 minutes later, and Tim was my friend, plus he was my supervisor at the time. Then a couple minutes later, he gave me a call, and I answered the phone, and then I could tell in his voice something was wrong. So when he called, I needed to know, are you calling Snap as friend, or are you calling him as supervisor? And then when he called, he said, I really, really, really need to talk with you. And when I heard that in his voice, I knew that something was wrong. And he said, I had this discussion with my wife last night, and I just don't know what to do. And I can't tell y'all that if he was crying or not, but I know my boy was going through. And so I said, okay, tell me what's going on. And he said, we was just talking last night, and he said, and she said this. She said, we clean the church, we helping the church, we give money to the church, we even help with the kids in the church, and she said, we have done all of this. Y'all hear what I'm saying, right? I, I, I. And she said, we have done all of this. How about what all of this we have done, how about if it's not enough to get into heaven? I listened to my friend. I felt his pain. So I told my friend, friend, I got some bad news for you. And friend, I have some, I got some good news for you. Friend, everything that she named can be all good. That is applaudable, but if you are saying that if that is enough 
for you to get into heaven? The answer to that is, it's not enough. It's not enough. But friend, I got some good news for you. What Jesus has done for us is enough. And listen, as we look at our passage today, this is what we want to point people to. We want to point people to Jesus Christ. Because if we don't point people by, to Jesus Christ, by implication, we're going to point people to themselves. In this passage here, you're going to see that Paul is constantly talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. And if we want to put our righteousness and our interest into heaven, my goodness, thank God, it's not upon our own selves. That's some good news. Because all of us in here, no matter who you are, you are not good enough on your own to make it into heaven. The answer to your interest into heaven is Christ and Christ alone. My friend wife said, did we do enough? The answer is no. I could have hear her anxiety and her depression in this. And some people do say that they don't tell people when to leave churches or that and all of that, but um, I'm getting older so I don't have time to play. Um, I do know of the church where they um, were going to and there was a church up here, so I do have some background. I tell my friend because he is my friend, and friends should be able to tell you some things you don't like to hear sometimes, right? And I tell my friend, I say, friend, you got to get your wife, and at that time his kids was a little smaller. You need to get your kids up out of there. Find you someone who gonna preach you Jesus and Jesus alone. Let's see what Paul says about this. Paul's in verse um, 19, because I want to show y'all what Paul is talking about here. Paul say, For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, that this will turn out for my deliverance. So we all know that Paul is in, is in jail here now. And I, I think we made this point out in house group um, one night that Paul, if we read earlier, Paul is in jail for the gospel, all right? Paul is in jail for being persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. Paul is not in jail because he robbed some bank, all right? Now, if you go to jail <laughs> for anything else and you go rob a bank or do anything else, you just in jail. You cannot say, Paul, God just used that just to, just to get you to do ministry there. But Paul is in jail, and he's being persecuted for the gospel. Paul, in this verse here, is not rejoicing in the possibility of getting out of jail, but in the certainty of his salvation in Christ. He's in jail, but even though he's in this, he's rejoicing, like he said before, yes, I will rejoice that even if this didn't turn out for my good, I'm going to be with my father. Some commentators say that when he's talking about this, that this can be physical or spiritual, and I just like to say it's both ain't. And for believers, y'all, this is not uncommon for us to go through things, okay? It is not uncommon. Sometimes as believers, and sometimes the message that we get from certain preachers is that, even for certain people, that when you go through things, you must have done something wrong. But that's not the type of teaching throughout the Bible. Oh, yes, we have done something wrong. All of us can hold up our hands for that. But everything that you go through, some things is just because of the name of Jesus Christ. And we live in a fallen world. This is not new. Listen to Psalms 23 um, and 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said he's walking through it, ain't he? I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That is the good news, that even though we go through things, Christ is with us. Look at the Apostle Paul here. He's not putting the focus on himself. 
For I know that through your prayers and help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Y'all look at this. When I'm saying you listen to my friend, but then you listen to Paul, he is pointing to Christ. This is the work of the triune God. Look at here. For I know that through your prayers, people are praying to God, and then the Holy Spirit come and he helps us, and they say that's the, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You see, the triune God is at work there. Just imagine when we go through things that we don't have to fight these things in our own power, that Christ is there with us. That is good news. Our prayers goes up to God, help from the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Just imagine of the things that some of us have went through or even in the future that you may go through. Imagine that you have to go through these things in your own power. Thank God that he has his Holy Spirit there to come and to give us help. And thank God that God will give us brothers and sisters in Christ that will pray to God on our behalf. And sometimes, if you like me, we want to keep everything closed up to ourselves. And I'm not saying you got to give everybody all information, but sometimes we just need to talk with some people, ain't it? Because we can try to handle life on our own. Sometimes we need to say, you know what? My kid is acting like something from the exorcist right now, and I need some help. Right now, my wife, well, no, all wives are perfect, so let me just scrap that one. <laughs> my husband is just acting like, no, believe it or not, no matter what, what, how we try to paint our picture, you will go through something, and you can't go through it by your own. And God does help us, and he has his means that he used the prayers of his people and help of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, it's my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but with full courage now and as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or death. And here we're saying that the Holy Spirit is still working. It's the Holy Spirit is the one that is giving Paul the courage to go through. So I want to make sure that y'all see this that Paul is not talking about that he got all of this power within himself. Who is he relying on? He's relying on Christ. He's pointing to Christ. People are praying to God. Christ, his Holy, by the Holy Spirit, is giving him courage to go through. That is good news for us. Just imagine, y'all can look back at certain things that y'all have went through. Y'all maybe had people to die in your family, some close relatives, or something tragic to go through. How did you get through? Help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ. We go through some difficult things. How? Where did the courage come from? Christ. That word courage means to give strength and to make brave. That is from Christ. Paul say, whatever happened in this, however this turn out, if I get out of jail, I'll preach on. If I don't, I'll be with Christ. Win-win. It's a win-win for me. How did he come up with that? And sometimes we'd be like, well, y'all know y'all have to talk like Paul all the time. And you'd be sitting there and say, well, I don't talk like that. If you like me sometimes, when circumstances get bad, I automatically want it to be good. I know I'm the only one. I know I'm the only one. <laughs> My man Ethan back there raised his hands to him. See? I know I'm the only one. I don't like when things don't go my way. Amen? I mean, I know, I, I, I get it, y'all. I get it. I get it. I know y'all been saved since when, when Moses been out. So I, I get it. But with me, I'm growing. When things go bad, I want them to go good. That's all right? But then, when I went through some bad things and see the help of the Holy Spirit, it just causes me to glorify and to praise Christ even more. And Paul said, regardless of what happened, Christ's going to be magnified and glorified in that. And listen, y'all, y'all know what the scriptures say. All things work together for the what? For the good. Not saying that everything is, is good. But somehow in God's sovereign will, it's still going to come out for our good and for his glory. 
And even though we don't feel like it, we don't like it, we don't want to go through it, but it's still there. And how do we do this? And it says here, by Christ. Paul said, regardless of what happens, he knows that God holds sovereign control. Now, he's in jail here of the hearts of the Roman rulers. Paul, and listen, y'all, we need to keep this in mind here, okay? That he's in jail, but guess who was really behind all of that? Christ. And you're going to say, well, the Romans just put him in there. They just did him unjustly. And you know what we would say that to that, Brother Joe? Yes. But guess who was behind all of that, who has all sovereign control over all things? And the answer is what? It's Christ. And sometimes God will allow us to get in some situations that may not seem like it's unfair, but he still has got all sovereign control, everything, so the gospel still can progress. Because if we will have the opportunity to pick how we want the gospel to go out, if you like me again, I'm going to pick the best way that makes me feel better. But God still was in sovereign control. If he was sovereign control over the Roman rulers back then, my brother Ryan, we can get a little bit more theology here now. He still has sovereign control over the rulers today, okay? And I hope it's not in Nero, I hope it's not in Caesar, and I hope it's not in whoever rules all today. I hope it's in Christ and Christ alone. We must remember this. Paul at verse 21 here, he said, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To live is Christ. I think once in a while to tell me when Joseph, we have a little time there, say that, well, we know that Christ gives us eternal life. And y'all know what? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, and that is correct. But for to live is Christ, and, and uh, the answer is just right. Guess what, y'all? It means that Christ alone defines life. Christ alone defines life. In other words, Christ is Paul's reason for being. And listen to me, y'all. If you are a Christian today, the only reason you are a Christian today is because of Christ and not nothing that you have done. Nothing. He did the saving, we did the sinning. That's it. Christ did it all. Y'all see that I like for Paul when he said, for to me, he made this personal. And he may have made it personal, but even if our theology is not there, for to you also, the only reason that you are a Christian is because of Christ. And Paul knows this. Paul knows that he was dead in his sins and Christ made him alive. He knew this. Even if you do not believe this, let me tell you this about you. If you are a Christian today, guess what? You were dead in your sins, and Christ made you alive. When you do get to heaven, it will be no, no, no chest bumping Christ and saying, we done it. It will be none of that. He's going to say, we done it. You done the sinning. I did the saving, homeboy. You did the sinning. I did the saving, homegirl. Paul knew, for to me, he knew what it... Y'all just think, if you, if you was a Christian... You knew where you was before you became a Christian. And some part of it would be like, I ain't been bad as this one, but you still been bad. I ain't done this like someone did, but guess what? I read this Bible. How many have sinned and fall short of the glory of God? All. I don't care who you are, you are part of the all. You have fall short of the high standard of God. Y'all don't have to turn that, but listen to Paul, Paul say this here. Just listen to this. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Just listen. You can write it down. And this is the apostle Paul. He just ain't saying this to the Philippians. And he say, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked 
following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3, he said, among whom he used the word, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. We were just like what? Everybody else. Then verse 4 say, and like for but snap, but Mika, but Matthew, but Ryan. It said, this is what happened. But who? God. Being rich in mercy. Because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, guess what he did? Made us alive. Guess what else? Together with Christ. For by grace you have been saved. You see what the Apostle Paul said about us? We were dead. And that's what Paul said, for to me to live is what? Christ. Because I was dead and he came along, meaning Christ made me alive. And even in Ephesians, he said, Paul said, we was not better than nobody else. We were just like everybody else. That's why it just amazes me when Christians want to just talk trash about people who are unbelievers, like we ain't never lived that lifestyle before. And then the scriptures try to tell us, like, we done something to get out of that lifestyle. And the Bible said, eh, eh, not so. We were doing the same things. Then Christ came along, pulled us out, and made us alive. For to me, to live is Christ. Y'all hear that? Y'all go back to the beginning. When my friend called me about his wife, who she was putting all her hope in? Her. Herself. Herself. She was saying, how about if we haven't done enough? This is why we need good biblical preaching. Good preaching. Good teaching. Christ-centered teaching, because, listen to me, if our sermons and if our preaching is not Christ-centered, by implication, it's going to be man-focused. Even if it's intentional or not intentional, by implication, it will be. I do not care if we in the book of Leviticus, you got to find your way to Jesus Christ. Because I believe scriptures tell me that all the scriptures Jesus said is talking about who? Him. It's him. He's the hero. From Genesis to Revelation, it's about him. He made us alive. If y'all think this is not true, I want to point out something to you. In these verses, verses 19 through um, 26, I'm almost done because the cowboy's about to play in a little bit. <laughs> I'm almost about done. Um, look at Paul. In these little verses here, I want you to show you something what Paul is doing. He's in prison, but yet he's still preaching Christ. I want to show you something. Verse 19, Jesus Christ. Verse 20, you see the word Christ. Verse 21, for me to live is Christ. Verse 23, um, departed and to be with Christ. Verse 26, um, ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus. Y'all see that? So this whole section is about who? Christ. This whole section is about Christ. Every time I would see, every time I would see this, Paul is always talking about Jesus Christ. Always pointing to Christ. Um, my same job there with our group there a while back. Y'all remember when Ryan's used to be opening in, in town? I'm not going to lie, I miss it. Now, we need to come together and have a, a prayer meeting or a prayer walk or something. We need to do something. We got to get that thing back open. We got to do something. So, the, the guys at the job, just the technicians, 
we decided that once a month we're going to meet for lunch at, at Ryan's. And we started this, and at this time there was this one particular girl that was the waitress there that we kind of got fond of. I, we, I can't remember if she was a college student or not, but every time we used to go, we wanted to sit with her. We want her to be our, we want her to be our waitress. We just had like her. To my knowledge, I never met her outside of my Terminex uniform or at Ryan's. So one day, I walked up in J.C. Penney, and me and my wife in J.C. Penney was, everything is gone. We really got to pray. <laughs> and we walked in J.C. Penney, me and my wife walked in. And I saw her from a distance. And she saw me. First time ever, never knew my wife. Went in. She walked up to me, and she said, hey. And I looked, I said, hey. And I said, hey, this is my wife, Mika. And she shake her hand. And then these were the first words out of her mouth. He's always talking about you. Y'all, y'all, boy, y'all, y'all talking about the Holy Spirit giving you courage and boldness. Like, Paul, when she said that to my wife, I was like, I start getting muscles where there ain't been no muscles at. I got bold. I, my chest stuck out a little bit. I think Mika buy me all kind of stuff out of J.C. Penny that day. I was like, I want one of them. I want one of them. I want one of them. I know she went home broke. I got two pair of jeans. I've been balling. It did something to me. I was walking like this, girl. Who's your man? I was like, tell her what I do. She said, he's always talking about you. Whoa. I've been the man that day. Tell her what I do. And listen, it could be funny, but listen, this is what we do as preachers and, and pastors. Guess what we do? We got to be talking about who, y'all. We got to be talking. There are so many things that beating at the church doors and try to make Jesus set in the background. We can't play Where's Waldo with Jesus. There's a lot of things that's knocking at the door. We're not saying that they are not important things, but my goodness, it can't take the supremacy of Jesus Christ. I believe the Bible say, him we proclaim. Him we preach. Believe it or not, he is the answer. And sometimes I think we don't believe that. We don't believe that. It's like that, like my friend, like I said, we want Jesus for initial salvation, but when it's time to live this Christian life, let's just push him out of the way. You needed Jesus while you was dead, and you need Jesus while you live this Christian life. You need it. Because it's very easy for us to push him aside and be like, I can do this. And I will tell you, point out blank, you can not. You need him. I need him. I've been doing this for a while now. I need to hear Jesus. Trust me because I'm apt to start trusting in my own righteousness. And if I want to trust in my own righteousness, this is the requirement. Perfection. That is the requirement. And you can ask my wife and you can ask my son. They will tell you he falls short. But there is someone who is perfect. Let me go on. because Look at verses 22 and 24. Paul said, let's get to Paul said, I'm hard pressed between the 23 and the 2. My desire is to depart, to be with Christ, for that is far better. That is true that he, he with Christ, with Christ, you don't have to worry about this world here, but it's Christ when he's living, it's Christ when he's died. And yes, he will be with Christ. He will get the fullness of a Christ always. He said, but... 24 said, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. He said, Philippians, it's good that I will stay here with you because this will benefit you in ministry. Paul said, I just come to the conclusion, verse 20, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your, what's the answer, y'all? Progress and what? For your, for your. Is that, is that in the Bible? 
Look, Paul said, if I'm going to continue to live here, Philippians, this is what I'm going to be living for, for ministry. And when I do come to you, I'm coming to you for your progress and for your what? Joy. I'm so glad that Paul didn't say, I'm going to stay here alone, and I'm going to be a preacher, and I'm going to be a minister, and I want to make my bank account progress. Believe it or not, I want to make it bigger. I want to see how many people I can get in the door. If you can't preach to nine, you don't need to preach to 90. If you can't preach to nine, you don't need to preach to 900. If you can't preach to nine, you don't need to preach to 9,000. Christ don't need you. People that think like that, sit down. Preach the word. He's in control of how many shows up and how many stays. Sometimes we think we put too much pressure on ourselves. Preach the word. He said, for your progress and for your joy. Verse 24 say, he also said that, that it will be, if he said that this will be fruitful labor. Listen, it will be what? Fruitful. It's going to be fruitful. It may not be 6,000 people, you over 6,000 people ministry, so what? You give me three, that right, and we can, we, can, we, can, we can do some stuff if we got some good theology. Bigger don't always mean, y'all know it, right? I think, can I say a whole hip-hop song? I, it's like what the people say, more money, more what? <laughs> more problems. More people, you're going to need, you're going to have... More people, more what? And we want them to come and you will set up some elders to help in the body and we'll do that. But if your, full, your own focus is just to make it bigger and better, I'm, challenge, I'm telling you, by implication, you are slowly pushing Christ away. And then instead of it becoming ministry, it's a business. It will be Fruitful. Paul was talking about he, he don't know which one he was going to choose, but God got the outcome in all of this. God is still sovereign. And listen, I want to make sure at this point before I close here. Paul said, I'm coming here for your progress and for your joy. He's talking to Christians. Y'all got me? Okay, Christians, snap included. Trust me on this one. I got something to say about this. Paul said, I'm coming to you for your progress, right? And for your joy, listen, Christians, trust me, this may shock you. You don't know everything. That's all right. He said for your progress and for your joy. Y'all know what do? We never stop growing in the grace of God and what Christ has done. We, become, we, get, we get to know him better and better, and we understand the gospel better and the implications of the gospel. We all going to continue to keep growing. I get it. I get it. I know you read your Bible 9,000 times this year all the way through. I get it, and I understand I know you got commentaries from the floor all the way up to the heavens like the Tower of Babel. I get it. I know you have been in seminary since Moses and Joshua was your classmates. I get it. But guess what? You still don't know. I know you came out the womb with a five solos and a Reformed Theology t-shirt on. I get it. But still, you don't know everything. And Paul said, I, Paul said, I'm going to stay alone, and God will use people to come along to, and teach us more doctrine about Christ. And for that, we need to say what? Thank you. I have some friends back there, y'all, that are here today. I'm not going to call no names out, but Mika and Ryan... They are well known for letting me know that I don't know everything. 
good friends. We bounce things off each other. That's how we grow. Paul is not saying that all oh, teaching is coming from me. You remember in Romans, he said, I'm coming to y'all. We're going to be encouraged by each other's faith. That's how we learn. If we can look back, y'all should know that at one time in your life, you probably in a better theological system than what you first started off with, right? And we say what to that? Amen. Guess what? Contrary to popular Christian belief, God is not downloading information from heaven straight to you. He's using people. He's using teachers. Paul say, this word progress means ceaseless forward moving. He says, it's for your joy. Some preachers, I think, is just want to make people just, they, 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 their sermons is, I just want to make you mad. What? It's just like they come off. You, you, I think they feel better if they have people like how my friend wife was, just debating if they have done enough or not. And they would feel like they have done their job. I can't waste my time with that kind of preaching no more. But listen, when you come to people for, for their progress and joy, you don't have to go out of your way to make people mad. Some of this stuff, not even your attention, it just naturally happens. Amen? You just got to tell people the truth of what the Bible says on certain things, and they'll just get mad. If you don't believe me, go in some circles, and even in a lot of circles, just say grace alone, and you might get a fight. You ain't got to say nothing crazy. You might, you, that doctrine is being, being, being beat up now, even people who claim to be in the reform circles. You say faith alone. Yeah, but you know. No. Paul saying, verse 26 says, So that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Paul is not saying that y'all going to glory me. He's just saying it's just the doctrine that I bring, the teacher that I bring. And when y'all do see me again and see that God kept me through all of this, that will give you fuel and more evidence to praise God even more. That is it. All what we do is for the glory of Christ. This is what it means, y'all, for me to live. It's Christ's ministry for the progress of the gospel. Not saying we can't enjoy things in life, but we got to be pointing people to Christ. As one commentator says this, y'all, the singular passion of a faithful Christian minister is to make much of Christ is to make much of Jesus Christ. Just like Paul here, y'all, that was in jail and said that he will be delivered, and that word can be um, mean his salvation too. We go through things, and the good news is that when we do go through things, that God is with us. And out of all of this, it will turn out for our good. Even if it even come to the point where it may take us on to heaven, but the Bible says, oh, yes, it will hurt even loved ones we leave behind because my Bible clearly tells me Jesus wept when he learned about Lazarus, right? These things does happen, but I guarantee you it is still the same. It is far better to be with Christ. And if you are still here, you don't have to muster up anything. If you are in the ministry, in any kind of form, if you are a Christian, you will have fruitful labor. God will have people out there that will listen to you, and not because of you, but because of him. If you are in Christ today, you are in Christ by the grace of God, by the glory of God, alone, and that is it. And the only thing we got to tell people is about this God. We don't have time to give them a 19-point sermon of them what more things they got to do. I, guarantee, I trust you. I beg you to preach them Jesus Christ and see what happened. I beg you. And listen, for the great salvation we did have, we do have, we were dead. Christ made us alive. And if you are not a believer, someone hear this later. I pray that God will grant you faith to believe. I pray, if I can use my scriptures right, that he even will grant you repentance. So that when you do come to Christ, just like in verse 19, all of it 
It's the work of God, and he gets all the glory. Amen.